Hey guys, how are you doing? This is Andre. I'm back with another episode of the TMS UX series where together we discover new TMS tools in the industry. And in this video, we're going to have a first look at SDL Language Cloud. Now, if you are new to this series, let me quickly explain to you what I'm trying to do. I roll a dice, which tells me which TMS to pick next. Then I go to visit that website. I look at what the company or the product is offering. I register, I sign up for an account. I create my project. I upload my two sample files. I have them translated in an online editor. And finally, I download the translated files back. And throughout my journey, I record everything and I try to provide a commentary on how the software, how the website feels, what I think about the user experience, what I think about the design choices and the stylistical preferences of the company that created this. And I share this with you. So this whole series is focused mainly on design, on how things look like and feel like, how intuitive they are. This is by no means uh, an extensive coverage of all the features that the TMS has. And this is how I ended up with SDL Language Cloud. Right now, by the way, is Saturday, January 16, 3 p.m. So let's get right into it. Rolling the dice. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, stop. Number five. Okay, something on the top. I think I haven't done five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, it's the SDL package. So here I see a bunch of things from SDL. SDL multi-trans. Is that even a TMS or is it just part of it? Then we have the cloud, world server. I have some experience with that. Anyway, I think I just might want to opt for just reviewing one cloud platform from T from, oh, sorry, from SDL, which might be language cloud, but I'm not even sure which one it is because SDL has so many things. So let's see what SDL has in store for us. Okay, I hear language cloud. I can only watch demo. Okay, contact. How can we ba 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 partners? My partner, product solutions. All right. I submitted the form. Good, 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 good. Anything else that I wanted to man, maybe do? Maybe I'll do a post. After I made the post on LinkedIn, thank God I got help from Hussein. Hussein, thank you very much. Uh, Hussein got me in touch with Chetin from SDL and then he organized this whole review internally because SDL Language Cloud is mainly targeted at enterprise customers who have their whole TMS solution set up by SDL. So these guys offered to set it up for me. They were very cooperative. One thing that I have to disclose because I always try to be transparent and I always want to keep my independent status is I had a meeting with the guys from the SDL and their only requirement was that I first share my review, all my recordings that I did, all my commentary first with them and they will have the opportunity to say yes or no to whether we release this or no. That was the only requirement that they had. And because you're seeing this video, it means they went ahead with it. Now, it doesn't mean that my review was super good. As you will see very soon, I provided quite a lot of feedback on what I think could be improved, but the guys were pretty much okay with it. So there was absolutely no censorship from their side and editing uh, decisions that I made for this video were purely my own. So. With that being said, let me make my final disclaimer. Everything that I say here in this video is purely my personal opinion. Again, I share how I feel about the TMS, how I feel about the style, the design, uh, how it feels intuitive to me based on my experience with other tools and with everything that we use on the internet these days. So this is by no means my recommendation whether this TMS is right or wrong for you. And with that being said, let's get finally right into the review of SDL Language Cloud and have a look at the UI. All right, so what I want to first do is I want to look at the website 
because I did some recording before when I first selected Language Cloud, but I think I was panicking a little bit. And I just try to submit the form uh, to get my hands on Language Cloud. So my first thought about this is, is this a good contrast? I was just looking at the contrast before. I'm not sure if I can get... Uh, what is this? Uh, Most of everything. It's part of the image, right? Um, I cannot calculate the contrast now. Maybe I, if I could pick the color somehow, the, the hex color. Uh, the title is visible, that's for sure. This thing, I'm not sure if it has the right contrast. The font is also a little bit skinny. Machine first, human optimized intelligent translation management solution. See as the language cloud for yourself. Watch demo. Um, the description is more like a feature is very machine first, human optimized, intelligent. It's a lot of adjectives. FYI, it doesn't speak the benefit languages for the user. I'm still wondering, is there a way how I can pick a color? I mean, I can just launch. Wait, does Sherex have something like that? Does Sherex have a color picker? Now I know. All right, so what does MS Paint have color picker? have pick the color good no. <laughs> how can I edit the color there we go RGB oh yeah. okay uh give me my HSL picker oh actually no wait Wait, yes. I need to type in the colors. RGB. Okay, okay. U is 29, 90, mm. That's not the color. What the heck? Luminosity. Uh. Okay, wait. RGB to hex. Let's do that. RGB. 169. Just want to get to the bottom. It's 165. 154. That's the one. Hex. There we go. And I want my contrast. Contrast color. Where is the beautiful link? Uh, I have it on my oh, this one. Contrast color versus a black one. Is that a black one? That's gotta be kind of like black. So yeah, the contrast is good. Oh, maybe I'm tripping, but I don't know. If I compare this thing, if I take this as a standalone page, that would be a landing page for. Let's say a typical SaaS product, then this doesn't stand out that much. Like the font is super, super tiny. Maybe it's because they have so many different offerings, but I don't know. If I land here, this is the SDL language cloud thing, then this is very small. Typically, you know, the hero images take a lot more space. Then here. And yeah. Mm, yeah, and it's again, this kind of like reminds me of X XTM Cloud. That's a review that I just did recently where they really enjoyed putting their logos everywhere. So normally, this is not 
that this is SDL Language Cloud, but it's like, what is the unique thing about SDL Language Cloud? But I guess it's a, if it's just a product page of a bigger website. I don't know. I don't have experience that much here, so. Yeah, so we have green as the main color that I think is throughout the page consistently. So that looks fine at the first glance. Uh, the image here, really not sure what it's supposed to represent. And oh yeah, I think I know what I don't like about the color. Like the color doesn't mesh well with the green, I think. Wait, now that I have this thing, now that I have the color, what is the color of the green button? The green... Oh, why is everything RGB? God damn it. Can I put an RGB? I can, yeah. This is why I was, yeah, this is why it didn't make sense to me. So it was actually not because of the the text. The text has a good contrast, although the font is skinny and small, but the button... Unless I messed up the color. I think I have the color right. It's the same one. Yeah, the color against the background doesn't have a good contrast. So that's why I don't like it. Now I know. And this image, this hero image, I'm not sure what it's supposed to represent. It's kind of like looking to a brighter day. No idea. Anyway, so that's the section. About the footer, I won't say much. Like, the footer looks clean. Not much to say there. Uh, the breadcrumbs... Fine. Okay, let's move on. Are you prepared for tomorrow's content challenges? The industry's only end-to-end, -end, blah blah blah. Build for enterprise scale, okay. What you learn about how machine translation... Yeah. No, so I was just... I'm just going through something similar, similar, when I'm creating the website for my new project. And the idea is that you don't overuse your color that much. If I look at this section because of the first frame or the thumbnail of the video that I see, <clears throat> there's really a lot of green here. So. Even if you want to use green here to emphasize some text, there's still a lot other green elements here. So that's why it loses the focus or attention, focus point, attention, whatever, um, of the people because there's too much green. So the green isn't that call to attention <laughs> anymore so yeah but that just maybe because nobody thought even see even the the play button is with the green thing so i think this is too much green in one small area i will not play the video oh even the the volume bar is styled to green so that's good that's nice yeah, just the background people are demanding and consuming more content if I think about this from the YouTube perspective, where it's all about the thumbnails to grab someone's attention, maybe maybe it's not that important for the videos that are embedded to, to product pages, but this is not that uh, attention grabbing because the font is again small, there's a bunch of green and so on, so it could be improved. So... Are you prepared for tomorrow's challenges? Blah, blah, blah. I already read that. Key benefits. Everything any translation stakeholder could ever need. Optimize for everyone. And sure. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, hmm. I think it's okay if it's part of the same section. Is it okay? I think I'm missing something. I don't know what. I don't know what is it that I'm missing. I think maybe it's that... 
this font, which is like a subtext of this section, is almost the same as this one. So maybe it's the maybe it's the the white space is not used correctly, or I don't know what, but something here in this section just doesn't feel right to me. And maybe, I don't know, I don't know how it would look like, I would need to see it. But when I complain about too much green... Whoa! Whoa! How did I end up with it? When I complain about too much green being used here, I would actually maybe prefer to use some of the green here. Maybe with the icons? I don't know. This whole thing kind of like... If, if it wasn't for the icons, which make it look a little bit interesting, then it's the text-wise, it's all the same. It's like blending, blending together. Shall we move on to the next one? Reduce translation cost. I don't know. Also, just from experience, <clears throat> normally, with these benefits, they're typically is a little bit more text like what the benefits are so this is like the benefit in few words and then you expand a little bit more on that maybe uh part of it is explained here i don't know whatever so this part this is again just my personal preference um uh, this to me seems like... Why does it always keep changing? Hello? Uh, I would prefer, personally, a bigger padding. Here, especially since this section already has green here. So it's kind of like very close to each other. So maybe that's why if the padding was bigger. The button wouldn't blend in with the, the green section next. Let's see. Where are we? This is this one. It is this one. Uh, that's the top one, right? Let's put 50. No, that's the left one. I'm stupid. Two. Four. No, slightly better, but... It's definitely better, I think. The problem is that it's still close to this big green thing. But yeah, better. Alright, moving on. Uh, download brochure. So we have watch demo. Then we have a video. Then we have a download brochure. I like the consistent use of the green, but I'm just wondering, personally, for my own sake, if it's good to have a hierarchy in the, in the, in the buttons. Like, the main call to action would be, let's say, this wild green, <laughs> however it's called. And the lower priority action, call to actions, would be a little bit uh, desaturated. Because right now everything has the same hierarchy, but I think it doesn't, right? Like, what is the most important thing that you want me to do? I can, like, download a bunch of things. And I can watch the demo. I don't know. I don't know what is the main call to action here, actually. That's a funny thing. I don't know, just by looking at this. To me, like, typically you put the main call to action on the top. So in this case, it would be watch the demo. But as I scroll down, the other call to actions have exactly the same style. So that's that. Now this part at first looks very nice. I like this pace that this section got. So I always say that a good white space is good. Very clever. 
I also like the, the gradient here around this box, which makes it stand out. Uh, now, what does it actually show? Discover the new must-have translation features. Online editor. Project heat map. Yeah. So, I think... Uh, I was reporting this in some of the previous UX reviews. Um, who did it well? I think XTM Cloud actually, yeah, that was the last one. They did it well, they showed the actual UI, what to expect. So these guys, they opted just to use some, to show some, I don't know, what is this? Illustration, graphic. I mean, it looks very nice, it looks clean, that's for sure. Uh, but it doesn't show anything from the UI. And I'm not sure even if it's if it's what they want to do. I watch demo, what does it do? Do I actually need to... Okay, it does show demo here, so... Yeah. That could be just my preference, that if you... If you're telling me about the features, I would maybe prefer to see them in the action. But, I mean, I don't know. Stylistically, it looks nice. The only thing that I'm not sure about is the big, the big green thing. It looks good, but maybe if it was, I don't know. Well, cannot put gray because we have gray here. I don't know. It's again... This time it has more space here. From the green, green uh, this this thing. I don't know. Maybe I think yeah. What I would do, I think everywhere all the greens have the same shade. So maybe what I would do is I would uh, use a different green here. Uh, what is? This one. So if we desaturate, but I don't know, something like this, like different, different green. Yeah, that, that's what I think is a problem with the green. Like I said, here it's overused, and the second thing is that it's always the same green. It's not different shades. So the different shades of green would give you a different hierarchy of the colors. So, yes, now I got it. Good. Oh, this even moves around. Nice. I've never seen that anywhere. That's a neat feature. Okay. Now, this, this is a problem for sure. Because, I'm not sure if it was intentional. But this section, as it ends here doesn't have any separation from learn more about. I'm not really sure if they intended to keep it as one, but it looks weird. It does look weird, right? Yeah, it looks weird. Yeah, it does look weird for sure. Is that a separate div? It must be a separate div, right? Yeah, it is a different section. Hmm. Yeah, so this I don't like. Yeah, I think there must be some separation. Even when I look at this part, this part that is kind of like lifted. Why does it keep changing? <gasps> this part that is lifted. When I scroll down... It feels weird. It still feels like this is lifted. Okay, now I, now I know. Now I got it. Looks like this thing is lifted. But it's lifted from this... this. Wait, why does it change? Why? Why? Okay. It still feels like it's lifted from this whole section. 
because there's no separation. Like it's separated on this part through the green element, but this part is completely white. So it's like one big section. So this thing is trying to stand out against these things, which doesn't make sense. That's that. Learn more about. Translation management security, again, stock photos, yikes. <laughs> and translation management, I don't need to look at that. Oh, okay, I never checked the buttons. So this one changes color, this one changes color, this one changes color, and these guys, they don't do anything. They only push out the image. Which is weird, because like I said before, all the buttons look pretty much the same. They are the same, I think. So this is inconsistent. In these are inconsistent buttons. And I don't know if it's the best way, like if I, I don't know, like if I'm hovering here and it changes, here it doesn't change anything, it just pushes the image up. That's a little bit weird. I've seen a better implementation of the images think what typically I see and what I'm used to at this point is that the image would, let's say, maybe initially it's a little bit darker and then when you hover, it like opens up, like brightens up or the other way, or it zooms in the image, but not that the image goes up. That's weird to me. And the images are super tiny. I don't know, like for example here, this is funny thing, because here, in this part, translation management security, well, that's an exclamation mark, but what I wanted to draw is something like lock, benefits of continuous localization, some circle, streamline your translation process, I don't know, some, some arrows or something like that. So exactly the same thing that we have here, these, this graphical element I think would better fit here than the stock photos. And here I would instead maybe put some uh, images of the UI. Learn more about. Okay. Now, this is again, I think, wrong separation of the sections. Clean this because again, we're still in the white section. The white section goes I think it's three different things that they put in this one thing. So this is one, the features, learn more about the second one. And the third one this here is, you can just guess based on the context because there's absolutely no title here. And this is, of course, I guess, customer testimonials. Uh, so that's another part. The section is not separated clearly. And what I also don't like, I think I'm pretty right, is the alignment. So the logo is not in the center. And the missing title. Customers love us. Customers love us. Okay. And ideally, more 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 references okay next one take advantage of next generation intelligent translation watch your demo to see okay, so this again we have the repetition of the same cta that we have here so i would assume that that's the main cta you want me to take so again going back to what i said i think the button should be differentiated because they're all the same Take advantage of the generation for yourself. Watch that one. Yep. I mean, it's okay. Again, maybe some extra padding. I wouldn't mind. I think I had some other thought, but I forgot. And is it the hierarchy of the text here? I don't know. I mean, it's not bad. Yeah, I'll just shut up. How long are we recording? Half an hour. Oh my gosh. That's long. He's just here. And the final hand, the footer. I think that one looks pretty nice. 
This is the first time that I see something like this. Like, the footer links are on the left side and you use the right side for something else. I like the separation. See, so this is nicely separated. Even here we have actually, you can see there's a, there's a, there's a slight grayish line separating this. Wondering if we use this anywhere before. Well, okay, they use it here in their headers. Okay, so that's fine. <clears throat> I do like it. It looks nice. I do like this. There's like some slight gradient, if I'm not mistaken. And this looks nice. It looks like a separate window. Sign up. And again, sign up for what? Oh, that's like a newsletter. So again, same thing with the with the with the hierarchy. Why? So sign up for a newsletter. That's probably like a lower priority thing. Watch demo and I don't know. Contact us. So yeah, but I already said that many many times. All right. So that's the. That's the that's the product page. As you see from the landing page, and the landing home page, product page, whatever, there's no way for me to try out, so I contacted SDL team if they would be so nice as to give me access to this super excited enterprise platform. And they said yes. And they created an account for me. I haven't logged in yet. I haven't tried it yet. I will need to create my SDL ID or something, SDL account and we'll see what happens so i got this invitation can we see it on the screen yes we can good andre zito you've been invited i've been invited beautiful so i'll well actually let me copy the link i want to open it here not in the other thing so let's see if it works <laughs> doing something no okay so i know from the information that i got that i need to use to sign up okay this whole thing actually looks nice 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 this is the uh, it's funny that when you log in it doesn't say log in but when you sign up it does say sign up that's inconsistent. I don't know why. Okay. But I do have to say I like the SDL's color palette. It's clean with the green. And I'm actually considering green as my primary color on my own project. So, okay, what do we do? Which email do I use? Hmm. Maybe I have to use my sign up. Your password. Let's try with password. Okay. So do you have a checker? This okay. There is no confirmation of password. Alright. Confirm. So I have not read and I accept if you say so. Okay, the button gets activated when you complete everything. Nice. Okay, here we have a different, as you can see, different behavior of the same style of the buttons. Maybe because it's UI, it's different. So this time the text grows in size. So let's see. I hope I'll remember the password. We did it. Changing terms, whatever, I understand, agree, yes, thank you, continue. Da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 -da. Yes! Successfully activated. I have no idea how much this even costs. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> oh look, we had orange. Nice. Good. Wait, so one thing that I know from the guys, from SDL guys, they told me that I need to actually use language cloud SDL slash LC. 
not CP. And then right now I'm in the CP customer portal. Where I have limited things to do, so I'm clicking and going there right now. Does it use the same session? A dash. It looked different. Release. 27 January. Okay. Uh, the image is super tiny. Cannot cannot see it. Close. Oh, wait, this looks like a different green than this one. All right. Now my question is, what happened to the orange? <laughs> we have another project. We don't. Everything is green. What? Ah, okay. All right, let's start the review. SDL Language Cloud Translation Management. All right, on the menu, looks good, There's so many options, that's good, add users, teeny tiny text, not a fan of teeny tiny text, also not sure why. We have so much space. I don't know that. And since I can close these. What happened? What just happened? <laughs> Why was I pushed to the end of the thing? Because this, 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 this box completed tours. Okay, so this is like a do this first. Oh yeah, we recommended you first add customers. Okay, I definitely don't like this this feature. I mean, not it's not a feature. It's a it's a design choice. So first of all, these things here on the top. They there's no. I mean. If I if I if I didn't experience the fact that it pushes me down to a section which is called completed tours, I would have no idea that this is supposed to like guide me how to use uh, as a language cloud. There's much way better, much better way to do uh, in UI tutorials. So I don't like the fact that it scrolls down. That's super weird to me. All right. There are no projects in your account. Projects created. So here we have some dashboards. Words processed. Okay. So, okay, that's the dashboard. That's the first UI. So let's try to do our own thing. Projects. Let's go. Let's go create projects. What is this filter? Filter, filter, filter. This looks good. First glance. Okay, new project. This is the thing, again, like I said, too much green. The thing is that if you use the green for your whole header, then this as the main CTA, again, doesn't stand out. And if you remember before that on the customer portal, we, have the new, we had the new project with orange. So it definitely stood out. Now it's again blending together. But I found it. I'm super smart. General, new project. Okay. Um, so here we have an indication of where we are in the setup. I like that. Enter project name. Your active field is highlighted in green. Good. Okay, let's do darkest dungeon. Hello, hello. Due date. Ooh, what is this? See, here we have different shades of green. I like it, but I need to make a sense of it. <laughs> so today is third. 
How does it overlap? Let's do next Friday. Okay, so it highlights today's... Yeah, that's nice. Location. What is location? Location of a project? What? Okay, Andrew Thomas, you are my location. <laughs> this is... Andres... Mega. Test. Project templates. Okay, yeah, so these are again things that the guys set up for me. So I will not question what 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 the, what it is. Source language, US. Okay, target languages. How do we add? Oh, they have the flags. That's a nice touch. Um, but just so we do our gem money, gem money. Okay, this one, Japanese and check. Hello, Czech Republic. I'll type configuration default. Sure. Enter any additional instructions. No. Custom fields. Questionable. I mean, I have some idea what it is for, but I think that's advanced. Drag the files or browse. All right. Now, where do we have our files? This one and the LC. Let's see. Ta da! Nice. Okay, I need to comment on the UI as we go, because I forget. I think it's okay. I said I have no idea what the location means in this case. Why is it important to create a project that I don't know about? Description is fine. This is fine. The fields look good. There's clear indication of what's mandatory. It has labels. There are not that many fields here that you would need to separate them into sections. So that's fine. I think it's fine. The only thing I was thinking about whether the file should be here on the right side. Or rather, they should be more on a separate step. But I think it looks okay. At least they make a use of the right side, which would otherwise be empty. <laughs> Reference to Memsource. Okay. So we have the files. It detects the type, usage translatable. What is this? Oh, reference. Okay, you can indicate reference. Status. Upload it. Good. Okay, I can already create and start. Anyway, let's, let's walk through the other thing. Translation engine. Andrew Thomas. Hello. Default translation engine. I don't know what translation engine means in this case. Is it the machine translation engine? Whatever, we'll just use the defaults. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Oh, no, no. See, this is where we add machi machine translation engine. What can translation engine mean? I have no idea. But that's another thing which we have to maybe mention here. Since it's like an enterprise solution, then I guess there's a lot of training that you get before you start using it. It's not supposed to be mega super self-explanatory like the other things that you try on your own in 30 days because those guys are basically banking on the fact that you try it and you'll figure it out and you'll stick to the software while people who would normally be using SDL language called already dealt with someone from SDL maybe even had it set up for them and were trained on this so okay um, so this is where we see the full width thing, which we didn't see on the general tab. Can I go back? I can go back, guys. Is it good? Is it not good? Could the fields be organized better? Uh, I don't know. It's like too much when you with this thing 
the name has such a long, su such a huge space for the name, but I guess your translation memories are not named that long. What is this? Are missing. Bruh. Do I need to? Do I need it? I don't know. And here, unlike in the previous one, when I was selling, telling you that there is no separation for the sections. So on the translation engine, we have actually a lot of these things. Is that necessary? Like for example, this like translation engine language processing rules is like something you pick. Do we need to separate it? I don't think we need to separate it. Is it that different? It's kind of like just, I don't know, set up. And then you have the section for languages. And then in the languages, you have just this separate. Like this separates only nothing. Like these two lines only separate source and target languages from the rest of the world. Is it necessary? I don't think it is. For me, it's like too many lines here on this page. Even when you count the, the lines in the tables, so we have this line, we have this, 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 this. Yeah, I already talked about the full width thing. I'm not sure if this could be organized in a better, more compact way. Or do I need a translation memory or no? Hopefully no. Or is this engine? Generic, yes please. Add. Okay. Do I need the translation memory? Uh, I never bothered with creating translation memories in the previous things. Term base, no? Okay, next. Pricing model. Okay. That's the advanced thing for us. So it calculates prices uh, directly. Nice. Uh, workflow. AT default. Okay, workflows. You can select different workflows. That's fine. Oh. Okay. Hmm. I'm not sure why. Okay. I selected the languages here. I still added them here? I cannot. On how I just shows... Well, this is the pencil icon, right? Pencil icon typically indicates editing. At least that's what I'm used to. But what I wanted to say initially is... Can I get out of the focus from there? Why did it turn green? What did I do? What I wanted to say before is that this to me looked like a list of, okay, these are the languages that you are doing this for. But here, the list of languages looks different and it looks worse than this one. I think this one looks, I mean, ugh, this one looks better. This one has this, this weird borders, which makes sense here because this is a active field, but here, it looks weird. So that's what I don't like. Next one, workflow. Here the same thing. Again, bunch of lines. This thing here looks good. The workflow. Human, human. Uh, document content analysis. Resource to target. Transition memory matching. Machine translation, yes. Transition memory matching. Can I exclude it? I don't have translation memory. <laughs> Copy source to target. It's automated. Okay. Machine translation. Yes, please. Analyzes. Translation. Sign task. Finalization. Transition memory. Update. Okay. This workflow actually looks super nice, I have to say. This looks nice. You still have the option to customize it for your project. Icons look nice. Finalization. I don't know what the colors represent, but I guess orange is all for pre-processing. 
Sense error assign task to a human. That's me. Settings. Mm. Yeah, whatever. Create. Let me just create first. I don't know. Wait, what does create and start mean? Oh, maybe it starts the workflow. Let's do it. Please work. Work, 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 work. Right, crunching, crunching, crunching. <laughs> Successfully created. Again, green, 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 green. Again, green. Too much green, too much green, too much green. So we have our projects. I wonder if the dashboard updated. It did. Mm hmm. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so what now? Represent. Mm hmm. Hmm. Wait, we are stuck at pre-processing? Hmm. We have a Kanban board, nice. Error in file format conversion, what? So, yesterday I stopped because I hit a roadblock because the files that I uploaded to my project, the ones that I use all the time, got stopped on an automated uh, step, which was file format conversion, if I'm not mistaken. I contacted the guys from SDL and they tried to reproduce the issue, but they couldn't. And they were actually able to create the project with the same files successfully. So I don't know what happened, but um i just launched this window so let me see if they okay it is in progress so okay so these are the test files from dennis and let's see my project is my project still stuck it is it still has errors Okay, so I guess I'll try to recreate the project again. Okay, create and start. Let's see. <laughs> Successfully created. Yeah, yeah. New status is new. Oh, this is moving. I, I didn't notice it yesterday. Take two. Okay. Where are we in the pre-processing? Step two. Copy source to target. Okay. Processor memory matching. Oh, yes, thank God. We are in the next stage now. Good. Okay, what is the workflow? So, yeah, it was already doing this one. Okay, so it worked. Thank God. <laughs> okay, so these are all automated. Uh, and until it gets to translation, I think I shouldn't be doing anything. Refresh. So now we got something. Nice, some dashboard. 
Okay, pre-processing is done. 24 out of 24. Oh yeah, I think, yes, I get it. So it counts a step for each language. So I think there were eight steps in pre-processing times three, because for translation, we have six steps times two files, right? Finalization, so four steps for finalization. Does it match? Well, there are two times two for two files. Yeah, that could make sense. Okay, let me look at the dashboard because we haven't seen this yesterday. Okay, project details on the right side. I think I like it because a lot of the people put the details of the project here as the main thing on top of the left, but technically it's not that important information. It's, it's more like metadata. If you're project manager, what you want to see is where your project is and some nice numbers. So that looks good. I like the colors here. Oh, arts. Oh, yeah, this is what I was talking about. The domain. That's nice. Okay, let me look at the, the things. Project progress. Okay, so that shows the steps. That's nice. That's nice. One thing that... Um, I'm not sure about if that's intentional or no, is if you look at the progress bar here, the height of it, and this one that indicates the content, this one is uh, higher. Not sure why. I would say, technically, if I think about it, the progress is more important to me than what is the type of content that you detected automatically? This is kind of like an indication, it's maybe like a tag, but progress, this is what I care about as a project manager. I think so. If we have different heights of these progress bars, then I would probably say to have the bigger one here. <laughs> Because even from the position of this, this, this thing, I don't know, box, well, panel, however you call it, it's on the top left. So it's the most important one. So, yeah. What else do we have? So that's the progress. That's fine. What I like actually from the workflow was that the, the steps were connected with these lines. That looks super cool, I think. So technically here, if we have this bunch of things, the, the little arrows could indicate that these, these, these stages are in an order like slightly indicate if you have more things because right now yes if you if you understand your workflow and if you look at the text uh, then yes you know that like it goes one after the another but if I just look at it like this it kind of looks the same way that that this thing looks like so there is actually no order so I don't know that's just a little little hint Okay, task overview. What are tasks? I don't know. Task history. Translation. Maybe once I start translating. I don't know. Task overview, new tasks, active tasks, completed tasks. I don't know what it means right now. Oh, is it like, no, there's no active task right now because nobody's translating. Completed tasks, I don't know. If you think about this, if this is the list of the tasks, then these tasks are completed, right? Maybe it just tracks manual tasks done by human. That would make sense. Statistics. Mm, 
<laughs> Statistics. 0% progress. I like it. It's big. Looks like it's going to fill up with the yellow or orange. Does it make sense to use a different color now? Maybe, I don't know. I'll see once I start doing something. Okay, here we have the statistics. Draft, 1,335. I think that's for all languages. Translate it. Proved sign off. Uh, it looks fine. This table looks fine. I like the big progress bar. But does it mean this is only related to translation? I think it is only related related to translation. But then my project is only with the translation workflow. I wonder how it works if you have a project with DTP and QA stages, if it also tracks those steps, or if it's only based on completing the word count based tasks. And here we have the content analysis. Entities. What are entities? Is it like the terms? That's nice. Looks like tags. I don't know what is the meaning of this. Like I said, I didn't have any training for SD language cloud. I don't know how you normally use the entities in in a business uh, sense. And from the localization perspective. Oh, here we have keywords. Are these supposed to be somehow interactable or do they give me any value or is it just FYI? So that I have a glance of what the content is about in here. Detected gaming, that's pretty good. Amenities, IT, arts. I guess there are some terms like Microsoft Windows and so on. Arts, yeah. I'm just wondering if this is that important for a project. Maybe if you run a bunch of projects, then probably yes. I was thinking if it would make more sense to put it maybe here, but then it wouldn't be that nice. So I guess, I guess, okay. Complete project, we're not doing it yet. So what do I do next? I need to do the translation. Stages, translation. Oh, open an online editor. Nice. Can I open multiple files? Let's see. First time looking at the online editor. Download translate file. Okay, loading. Oh, it looks nice. We didn't merge the two files. Document in read-only mode. Well, document is open in read-only mode. You cannot do any changes. How do I start editing it? That's my question. Oh, we have already NMT. Nice in place. And no, it's just uh, about. How do you switch to the documents? Pop up block. Did it block the other one? Oh yeah. Okay, it opens in two tabs, each file separately. Got it. But how do I make it translatable? Do I need to assign it to myself? Linguists, oh yeah. I think it's assigned to linguists and I'm not a linguist. Shit. If it's red only, I'm done. It's still red only. I have no idea. I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea. Stop being the recording. Okay, quickly resuming. <laughs> As I just asked for help from Dennis, I looked at the... Oh my god, so many things. I looked at the, the notifications and now I see that I need to accept the task. It makes sense. I'm stupid. Okay, Darkest Dungeon Take 2, let me quickly try it. Where is the German one? 
accept here. Okay, accept. Accept, okay, active, do I have it active? I do, okay, open an online editor. No, there's extra buttons, so I think it will work now. Oh gosh. Yep, yep, now it works, okay. <laughs> so, wait, do I have the right window? I don't have the right window, but Okay, well, actually, I'll do a quick cleanup. I'll get rid of this project. Delete. Yes, goodbye. And I'll go to my inbox and I'll confirm everything. So these are, yeah, these are Dennis's projects. I don't need those. This one got stuck. Let me clean this up a little bit. Wait, the project's okay. Now let me refresh this. It's still in my queue? Why? That's weird. Okay. So, project. Can I filter? Whatever. Um, one, two, three, four, five. It should be these things. One, two, three, four, five. Accept. Good. Okay. Accept. Nice. So now if I go back to my project, I should be able to translate everything. Stages. I like the Kanban board. And let's go. I want to open everything. Which one is German? It's going to take a little while to load. Das Gericht von Klinsenko. Yeah, that's the one. Okay. Dunkelster Dungeon. How do you confirm? Does Control and work? It does. Oh, it's confirmed. Nice. I like the user interface, so I didn't comment. I usually don't comment much on the online editors. I already said that I like the ribbon. The highlighting here is green. Again, like I said before, I think maybe the header could be different. Not so bold because it's a saturated green. And I think the, the header could be a little bit tuned, toned down. Uh, Formatting is good. Uh, Hell then, yeah, find the yeah. Alright. I'll play this one as well. And that means all of our translations are ready now. And if I refresh this, yes, everything is in the finalization stage. Target file generation. Is that a manual step? Probably, because it's here. Let me look at the workflow quickly. Uh, target file generation. Oh no, it's automated. Wait, does it mean it's... Does it mean it's generating? Where? Oh, I didn't... I didn't update this while I was translating. Shit. Completed task 6. Okay, so one task means one file or one language. Uh, translate it. What? 125 translated? <coughs> That's weird. Why does it say 125 words translated? And 1200 is in draft. That's weird. That is weird. Okay, I'll have to run, so let's wrap this up. Oh yeah, I can't even select this. So finalization, okay. Let me go to the files. One, two, there's still this file format conversion, I don't know why. 
go away, go away, and download all translated files. I don't know what is the difference between download, download all. Oh, download all is for everything, so you don't have to select it. Is it necessary? And why does this download have no option and this download has source and reference files and translated files? I don't get it. Anyway, Zoopcontent all files is being created. Successfully created. Oh, download it. Oh, there we go. Downloads. Darkest. SDL. Okay, so good. So it's grouped into the language folders. And let's look at German because that's the best one. Dunkelster <laughs> Kirker. Or whatever. Okay. Uh, this looks fine. Here I forgot some spaces around the tags. Uh, the links are fine. And even this thing, the Zeichen classen, that's translated. A lot of the editors actually don't parse that information. I mean that, that, uh, that those strings. Yeah, I missed the uh, missed the spaces around that, but otherwise I guess okay. And the DLC, Schreibung, Plattformen, yeah, 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 yeah. That's fine. All right, that's it. That completes our review of SDL Language Cloud. A little bit of technical hiccups, roadblocks uh, that I had to figure out. Uh, but otherwise, the platform looks promising, I would say. Um, it looks good. The editor looks good. One thing that I was pointing out in previous reviews was that typically there's a big disconnect between the home page and the UI, and sometimes between the UI and the editor. But for SDL Language Cloud, everything is consistent because they just use the green, but they use it everywhere. So it's used here, it's used in the editor, so at least that's a good thing. It's it's consistent. That's a big plus. I mentioned a couple of things yesterday when I was setting up the project. The editor looks good. Uh, there are just a few things and um, the the roadblocks that I encountered were because of the settings, I guess, because I'm not, it's not as straightforward as some of the other tools, but I managed to figure it out. All I had to do was accept the job, and yesterday I got stuck on the fact that the files didn't convert for some reason, but today it was working fine. So that's it. That is the review of SDL Language Cloud. And that was my review of SDL Language Cloud. I'm running out of battery, so let me do this quickly. Thank you, first of all, for watching the whole video. If you got to this point, uh, hopefully it was useful to you. Give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more of my reviews, more of my commentary on the other TMS tools that we have in the industry, or you want to check out the previous ones, please consider subscribing to the channel. And I will see you in the next two weeks with another new TMS that we're going to discover together. See ya. Bye bye.